you know, good team win. Uh, I thought, you know, give Florida a and a lot of credit. I thought they came in, had a really good game plan. I thought they played very hard. Uh, they were attacking all night, and uh, our guys had to respond. I thought they did a good job, especially in the second half, of really focusing on what we wanted to do on both sides of the basketball, and we were able to build a lead, and that's what I want to see our guys do, is how do you build and how do you maintain the lead. Once we, you know, once we got the lead, we were able to kind of maintain it, and, and we finished the game out. It was, a, it was a defensive struggle in that first half at times. Just, what did you kind of see early on? It just shots rimming out? or. Yeah, I thought we had some good shots. I thought uh, we missed some good looks. And that's part of basketball. I always told our players, you know, that's why you have to win on defense because you can never predict when you're going to have a night where the ball's not falling for a lot of your players. And when it's not falling, you know, what do you do? Just surrender? You can't do that. So I think if you, you know, you stick with our principles, things that we work on every day, which is defense first, you know, you can, you can win a game when you're not shooting it as well. And like, you know, I always told you before, Brandon, you know, you give them credit. There's a reason why we may not have shot the ball as well. You know, how they defended, what they were doing may have had an effect on us. So uh, we have to look at how we get better from this. Uh, happy we were able to, you know, learn from a win. And I think we'll grow from this experience. It seemed like once your offense ended up getting getting going after overcoming that initial rough patch at the beginning, FAMU did so as well. What did you do to end up creating separation that you ended up doing the second half? Well, I thought we got some timely stops. I thought we turned them over, you know, a number of times in the second half, and we got some momentum off of that as well. So between turnovers, I thought execution was better offensively. I thought we moved the ball better in the second half. Even though we had some good looks in the first half, I didn't think our ball movement was great. I think it, it shows by our assist number. But I thought in the second half, I thought we moved it better. The ball kind of found the, found the right guys in rhythm. And that's how we play. And uh, we got back to, you know, playing UCF offense. C.J. Walker came into the game today and he played after missing a plethora of time with injuries. How did you see him? And he was struggling a little bit. Do you want to speak on that? No, absolutely. You know, C.J. is going to be fine. You know, the main thing was is, was to get C.J. out there and get an opportunity to play. I mean, he's been, he's been away for two months. So, uh, uh, you know, naturally there's going to be some rust. And so for him, it's, just, it's, it's battling through that. This was the first step in his development in that, in that area. And he's going to only continue to get better. Uh, you know, I thought he did some good things out there. The main thing, I thought he moved well. He moved well on both ends of the floor. And that's what I was really looking at. And then, you know, the way we play with the kind of pace to play 12 minutes and to play him as hard as he was able to do, which was also a good sign going forward for us. So really happy to have him back. And like I said, he's only continuing to get better as he starts to, you know, get, you know, more minutes and, and get more games under his belt. So has he been able to practice over the last few days or what was kind of the build up to putting him out there tonight? Uh, he was able to practice over the last few days. I mean, the last day they practiced was, uh, you know, the day before the game, and he was able to get out there and, and you know, and go through the full practice and go through everything that, that he needed to go through for the, for the trainers and everyone to see how he felt afterwards. He said he felt, you know, good afterwards, and that, that allowed him to be able to play in the game because he was close, but it was just a function of how he finished up this week between Monday and today's game. You know, how would he respond to everything? And I responded well, and so they gave him the, they cleared him to be able to play. I know it's been tough for him, you know, being out and everything, but just how big is it for him to be back and he'll have a couple games before you start conference play? Just, just how impactful is it to have C.J. Walker available now? Oh, it's, 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 it's huge. It's hugely important to have him back because he gives us an experienced, you know, frontline player. I mean, you're going to need players of his caliber, you know, as we move into the Big 12. And so having him back gives us a player that we think no matter what team we play against in the conference, that he can match up because he has the experience, he has the size and strength. And so, uh, yeah, having him back is, is important for our, our program, and I'm happy for him. Shamari met, talked about how Ibrahim Diallo was put up against FAMU's big and ended up getting 12, you know, 12 boards, 6 to 10 from the free throw, free throw line. How big was his contribution today? Well, he played really well for us. I mean, he played, he was a rim protector, he rebounded the basketball, he got fouled, which we wanted him doing, and, uh, and he was, you know, and he was effective at the free throw line. And uh, he, went, he went six for 10, and that's, that's good. So, it, so that was good to see. And uh, he's only going to get better because he's working at it, so he's going to be even shoot the free throw, I think, better as the year goes on for us. But I thought he had a presence for us inside. His size and, his, his, like you said, his ability to block and change shot, alter shots, I think helped us a lot this game. You guys shot three for 20 with seven minutes left in the first half and nine for 30 overall in the first half. With conference play um, a game away after Bethune, does, does that concern you, and how do you look to get better at it? 
Well, you're going to have nights, as I mentioned before, where the ball's going to fall. You have nights where it's not going to fall. And every team's going to go through that. It's just a matter of when. And so for us, we had one of those nights tonight where I thought we had some good looks. They didn't go for us. And that's okay. You know, I, I try to explain to our guys, that's why, you, you know, you defend. That's why in, in practice every day you work on that. You have to learn to win on defense because the nights that the ball doesn't fall are nights where you just can't hang your head and just, you know, throw in the towel. You have to find a way to win. And I think the best way to find that way is on a defensive end. I mean, you hold teams to 50-plus points in the game. You're going to always give yourself a chance to win if you hold your opponent to that number. And I thought we did a good job of that today. Do you like like the way your team is able to press and defend? Uh, I think 21 turnovers, a lot of those came as a result of that. Absolutely. I thought uh, 21 turnovers, get, which gives us the opportunity to get out in the open court, give us a chance to run and space the floor, you know, the way we want to play. And it gives us a chance, again, with our depth to utilize that. You know, we have confidence in our guys that are coming in off the bench for us that they can come in and contribute. And they did it again tonight for us. You know, guys are always picking us up. And so I think, as I've always said, strength is in our numbers. I think it showed again tonight. You really got to the line a lot in the second half there. How big is it for you guys to get to the free throw line like you did in the second half when the shots aren't falling like they were? Well, it's very important for us to get to the line. We want to get to the line no matter what because that's a sign of aggressiveness for us offensively. And so I thought our guys did a good job of getting into the bonus and then capitalizing when we got in there. You know, guys were knocking down free throws fairly consistently. And that's what we have to do. You know, we have to make sure we balance our offense out between free throws, between threes, and between, you know, finishes around the basket. Towards the end of the first half, when you guys weren't scoring in a set position, it seems like the offense started to move in more of like a fast break offense and started to find open looks like that. And they carried that momentum into the second half. Do you want to speak on that? Definitely. You know, that's what I'm saying. You know, we, we generate offense off our defense. You know, turning someone over 21 times takes a heck of an effort, you know, at this level. And I thought our guys did a great job of working really hard, creating turnovers by getting steals, us getting out and running out transition, getting easy baskets, open threes. And, and that's where we've been. That's our identity. You know, we get after you defensively. We try to turn our defense and the offense. And I thought we started doing that more in the second half and later in the first half as well. So what kind of schedule do you guys have over the next week? Uh, play next Friday night, a few days off of Christmas, I take it? Absolutely. Our guys are off now. And, uh, you know, want our guys to go home and spend time with their families, enjoy their families for holiday season. It's a great time of year, and they should enjoy it. You know, if they get a chance to get into the gym, that would be great but they don't need to go play any pickup games or anything of that nature. They want to get free throws or get shots up or stay, you know, get some conditioning runs in, you know, that'll be fine. The main thing is have fun, enjoy your families. When we come back, we'll reconvene and we'll, we'll get after them pretty good and run, run the meals off of them. Last question. Last time you had a lot, had the lights out first half and then you had the tied second half against Maine. This time around, you had the close first half against FAMU and then you got the separation in the second half. What do you think the team needs to do in order to, to string together a full 40 minutes? Uh, we need to continue to do what we're doing. Uh, it's, that'll happen for us in some games, you know, because, you know, we, as long as we're taking the right shots, as long as we're defending the way we're defending, you know, that's going to come as guys start to get more comfortable in our system. Like I said, we're introducing new players almost every other day, it seems like. And so as we're introducing new players, they're being thrust into the rotation and, and they're having to get comfortable. That means other guys are getting less minutes or no minutes in the rotation. So that's changing up everyone's role right now. And so when you're doing that, I expect us to go through what we're going through right now until guys all get comfortable in their roles again. And that, that just takes some time for guys to accomplish that. But we're working in the right direction. We have a really good you know team. Guys, you know, they, they really like each other, they enjoy playing with each other. So I think that'll make getting our chemistry and continuity back faster. I think it'll make it easier for us. We know you're always focused on the next game, but how is it to have conference play coming up and are the players excited? Uh, you know, we haven't really talked about that, really, because as you just mentioned, you know, all I'm thinking about is our next opponent, which is Bethune Cookman. And I'm not looking, at, you know, I don't look past any opponent. I don't watch any game prior to the, to the opponent we're playing. So the game that I'll start studying over the holidays will be Bethune, and then we'll move forward from there uh, because that's our next biggest opponent, because that's our next opponent. Appreciate it. Merry Christmas, Coach. Merry Christmas, Coach. Merry Christmas, guys.